Salut à tous, my name is Marion Buricatu. I am a French artist and I lived here in the United States since 2001. This video is about art and how to impress your friends and family at the museum with free easy pass. So today I have a special guest and we're going to have a discussion about Edouard Manet and my special guest is my daughter Domitine. Hi. So we're going to jump right into it. Yes. Um, you've been talking to me a lot about Edouard Manet. Why was he so special? Well, merci for asking this wonderful question, Domiti. And um, he's so special because if he was, in fact, the father of Impressionism. Mm. So here are the three facts that I'm going to talk to you today. Fact number one, he was a rebel in elegant clothes. Fact number two, he was a realist painter. And fact number three, he cleared the way for, for Impressionism. So here is a painting by Manet called The Repose, painted in 1870, and this painting is at the Rhode Island School of Design. Very close. Yes. So, fact number one. Yes. Why was he a rebel in elegant clothes? Well, Manet was an elegant Parisian dandy who lived in the second half of the 19th century in Paris, and here you can see a picture of him. It was a very exciting time in Paris, economic growth, mm. the urban culture, culture replaced the traditional culture based on agriculture. Also, there was development of transportation, new railroad, technological innovation. Sounds like there's a lot of change in the air. Yes, and change is coming in the art world thanks to Manet. He changes, he challenged, excuse me, he challenged the academic art based on rules and method. He wanted feelings. He said, it is not enough to know your craft, you have to have feeling. Science is all very well, but for us, imagination is far more. That's very revolutionary. Yes. So was the fact that he was a realist painter also revolutionary for fact number two? Yes, because before Manet, paintings were about idealized divine men and women, like in this painting, The Birth of Venus by William Bouguereau. Oh yeah, that's a little fake. Yes, <laughs> it's not very realistic in no. fact. <laughs> yeah, so now look at this painting by Manet, Luncheon on the Grass, painted in 1863, and it's at the Orsay Museum in Paris. Well, the style is a bit different, but there's still a naked woman at a picnic. I'm not sure that's very realistic. <laughs> yes. Well, so it's still not very realistic for us and our generation, but the nude woman looks much more realistic than in the previous painting, in fact. Oh. And that was considered an offense to the sensi. It was very provocative. It was a scandal. Wow. How dare he? Yeah. <laughs> So our last fact, he cleared the way for Impressionism. What does that mean? It means like he was like a ball in a china shop. Thanks to his defiance, he freed the next generation from all the stiff rules of the established academy. Mm. They would use a lot of new painting techniques. They would lighten their color palette. They were interested in innovation, experimentation and creativity. Wow. Yeah, so here are two pictures of the before and the after Manet. So look at this picture, Romance during the Decadence by Thomas Couture. And this painting is at the Orsay Museum and it was painted in 1847. Now, look at the after Manet painting. This one is called A Woman with a Parasol and this is by Claude Monet. And this painting is at the National Gallery of Art in Washington and it was painted in 1875. I can't believe they're only 28 years apart. It looks like the first one was painted during the Roman times. Yes. Wow, that is a very big change and I'll do to my next. Yes, exactly. So here are the three facts. Easy to remember about how special was Edouard Manet. First, he was the father of the Impressionism, and here are the three facts. Fact number one, a rebel in elegant clothes. Fact number two, a realist painter. And fact number three, he cleared the way for Impressionism. Now, if you're like me and you want to impress your friends and family at the museum even more, or just, you know, have fun at your next family dinner, the next video is just for you because I have created seven trivia question and my victim today will be Domiti. <laughs> also, if you want to learn more about Edouard Manet, there is a list of links that I have put uh, below in the box. You can just check them out. Nice chatting with you. Abonne-toi, which means subscribe to my channel. Have fun and see you at the next video. 
This video is the sequel of the previous video, which was Edouard Manet, how special was it? But this video is very special because I'm giving you seven awesome trivia questions to not only impress your friends and family at the museum, but also just entertain them and have fun. So here is a painting by Manet called The Repose, painted in 1870, and this painting is at the Rhode Island School of Design. So let's get started with my victim of the day, my daughter, Domiti. Hello. <laughs> so are you ready for some tough trivia questions? I think I know most of the answers. Oh, come on. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. So so, um, question number one. Edouard Manet lived in Montreal, New York or Paris? Montreal, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> no, he lived in Paris. <laughs> okay, Edouard Manet lived during the 19th century, 20th century or 18th century? The 1800. 18th, 18th century? Well, 19th century? He lives, he lives in the 19th century. Okay. Yes, nine, one, eight, zero, zero. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. So he lived in the 19th century, yes. Um, question number three. He was part of an art movement called Romanticism, Expressionism or Realism? Mm -hmm. Realism. Bravo. Bravo. Romanticism was just before and yeah. they, he was rebelling against Romanticism. What was the second one? Um, expressionism. It's a 20th century move, okay. art movement. Um, question number four. What was the name of his, of one of his scandalous painting? Dinner oh. on the river, picnic in Paris, luncheon on the grass. It was either picnic in Paris or luncheon on the grass. Yes, so it was luncheon on the grass. And that was the second title. In fact, the first title was in French, le bain, which means in English, the, the bath. bath. But it changed. Question there's no bath in the painting. There's water oh. in the back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so question number five. He is considered the father of which art movement? Dadaism? Impressionism or Rococo? Impressionism. Bravo. But my favorite is Rococo. Yes, just before. <laughs> yes. Rococo is the, 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 um, is the century before that. Question number six. Claude Monet is younger by how many years? Eight years? Two years? Thirty years? I think it's eight. Eight years. Okay. Bravo. Very good job. Yes. So, last question. The classical painting Roman during the decadence was painted by... That's a tough one. Because these are three painters of the same period and same style. Okay. William Bouguereau, Ernest Messonnier, Thomas Couture. Well, I remember the name Thomas Couture and I have no idea who the middle one is. So I'm going to go for Thomas. Well, okay. good choice. <laughs> Thomas Couture. Well, thank you very much for answering this question. So please print these questions and their answer and have fun with your friends and family at the museum or at your next family dinner. And also there's much more to say about Edgar, um, excuse me, about Edouard Manet. And uh, so check out the links below. So uh, today I'm having a special guest and we're going to have a discussion about Manet's technique. And this special guest is my daughter, Domiti. Hi. So why are we talking about Manet's painting technique? Well, merci for asking this wonderful question, Domiti. Um, it's because he started a painting rebellion. So oh. here are the three facts I'm going to talk to you about. So the fact number one is the slapdash technique. The fact number two is no more mid-tones. And the fact number three, black paint. So here is a famous painting by Edouard Manet called The, ba the Balcony and it was painted in 1869 and this painting is at the Orsay Museum in Paris. So for fact number one, slapdash technique, does that mean that he was just carelessly painting? Well, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he was doing. <laughs> exactly. Because he wanted his paintings to be more spontaneous so it doesn't look overwork. Before, in the classical painting style, you were not supposed to see any brush strokes, like in this painting, for example, called Nymph and Satire by William mm. Bouguereau, painted in 1873. And this painting is at the Clark Art Institute in Massachusetts. Cool. Yeah, so thanks to the new paint tube, the paint was thicker and the ex execution was faster. He's wanted his brush 
He wanted his brush strokes to be thin, to be loose, to be broad and quick. So here is a painting called Argenteuil, painted in 1874. This painting is at the Musée des Beaux-Arts in Tournai. This is in the north of France. Okay, so if I remember correctly, that painting technique was really embraced by the new generation after him. So that's what we call impressionists, right? Absolutely, okay. you've got it right. And so why did he not use mid-tones? Moving on for fact number two. Well, because what happened is that he eliminated almost all the intermediate values, which are called the mid-tones, between the lightest values of the paintings, which are what we call the highlights, mm. and the darkest values of a painting, which is what we usually call the shadows. He was a Keynes painting that were stews and gravies, as he called them. Okay, but doesn't that make the painting look a little more flat? like? Yes, okay. absolutely, and this is what he wanted. He removed the free dimension of the painting, which was omnipresent in painting since century, and he wanted to get rid of that. Mm. Here is what portraits look like with mid-tones. Um, this painting is a self-portrait by Angelica Kaufmann, and it was painted in 1784 and it's in Germany. I wish now, I could do as good of a self-portrait. Yes, it's a good one. <laughs> yeah. It's a really good painting. Yeah. Very good three dimensions. <laughs> yes, very good three dimensions. Now, here is what a portrait by Manet looked like without the mid-tone. It's a portrait of Victorine Meurant. It was painted in 1862 and this painting is at the Museum of Fine Art in Boston. Nice. Yeah, I can definitely see a difference. It looks much more two-dimensional. Yes. There's a clear divide between the clear and the light. Yes, the absolutely. The dark and the light. Yes. Right. So, fact number three, what does black paint mean? Oh, it means that really Manet was the last French painter to love and use black paint. Here is one of his best paintings, his most famous painting of Bert Morisot with a bouquet of violet painting, painted in 1872. And this painting is at the Orsay Museum. Camille Pizarro, one of the most famous Impressionist painters, once said that Manet knew how to paint light with black. Wow, very cool. Yeah. So what happened to black? Well, the Impressionist painters stopped using it because they said that all shadows had a color. They decided, they, they thought that we shouldn't paint shadows anymore with black paint, but your shadows should have some color in it. Mm. Renoir said, one morning, one of us, having no black, used blue instead and Impressionism was born. Well, I'm not sure that's the only cause of Impressionism. No, I agree. But, you know, it's interesting. It's interesting. <laughs> it's, a nice, it's a nice quote. Yeah. So when was black reintroduced? Was it ever reintroduced? Yes, it was okay. really reintroduced 50 years later by Henry Matisse. And uh, he really, again, used a lot of black in his painting. Okay. Yes. So here are three facts easy to remember about Manet's painting technique. Fact number one, slap dash technique. Fact number two, no more mid-tones. And fact number three, black, black paint. Now, if you're like me and you want to impress your friends and family at the museum even more or just have fun, the next video is just, just for you because I have created seven trivia questions about Manet's technique. Also, if you want to learn more about Manet, you can check out the link below. So this video is a sequel of the previous video about Manet's painting techniques. But this video is special because I'm giving you seven awesome trivia questions about Manet's painting techniques. So here is The Balcony by Edouard Manet, painted in 1869. And this painting is at the Orsay Museum in Paris. Let's get started with my victim of the day, my daughter, Domiti. Hi. <laughs> so let's get started with some tough questioning. Okay. Question number one. Slapdash technique means an overworked painting, an edited painting, a spontaneous painting. An overworked painting? No. Oh. So the it's the opposite. Okay. In fact, it's a spontaneous painting. In fact, slapdash is the opposite of the overworked painting. Okay. Wait, good try. <laughs> Question number two. With the invention of the paint tube, the paint was thicker, more transparent, more liquid. More liquid, because they can transport it easier. So. Yes, so a lot of people think that, and in fact, it's not the right answer. The oh. answer is, <laughs> is that it was thicker, it was more pasty. But yes, a lot of people thought that because of a paint tube, 
the, li the paint would be more, more liquid. liquid yeah. Well, okay, question number three. Which art movement embraced the slapdash technique? Renaissance, abstract expressionism, impressionism. Well, I think it's impressionist, yes. but abstract impressionist is also the same, no? Yeah, so abstract, I mean, abstract expressionism, it's an American movement of the 20th century, and they use a lot of acrylic paint. Is that John Singer Sargent? No. Oh. John Singer Sargent is at the same time as the impressionist painter. Okay. Yep. Okay. So now, question uh, number four. What tones did Manet eliminate in his paintings? Was it the shadows, the highlight, or the mid-tones? The mid-tones. He bravo. kept the shadows and the highlights. Yes, okay. bravo. Question number five. What did he say about paintings with mid-tones? He said they were like mud and stones, <laughs> stews and gravies, a circus of clothes. A circus of clothes. <laughs> well, yes. Well, the answer was stews and gravies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question number six. He was famous for using which color? Black, red or blue? Black. I remember because of the Berthe Morisot um, painting. painting. Bravo, yeah. bravo. Question number seven. Who used colored who used color to paint shadows? Was it Manet? Was it Thomas Couture or was it Renoir? Was Thomas Couture an impressionist? No. Oh, I would have gone for Thomas Couture. Yes, no, so it's Renoir. Okay. In fact, I'm saying Renoir, but in fact, it's all the impressionist. Well, please print this question and their answer and bring your friends and family at the museum and have fun. Also, there's many more things to say about Edouard Manet, so don't forget to check out the link, be the link below. Oh, this video is a little bit special because instead of telling you things about painters, I'm going to give you a little demonstration about Edouard Manet and what we just said in the previous videos. So there's two things that I really want to talk to you about. The first one is about the color black and how Edouard Manet used a lot of the black color while the Impressionists didn't use the black color and they made their shadows with a mix of colors. That's the first thing I want to talk to you about. And the second thing that I want to show you is this whole thing about when I said to you that in the classical paintings before the Impressionist, um, you were not supposed to see brush strokes. So how do you do that? And the technique is called glazing technique. So I'm going to start with the first one, Man is Black. Um, so I prepared my little uh, palette. So this is, you know, how I work when I uh, paint. I usually have a paper palette with some cardboards. And as you can see, I've already put some colors. Here is the purple, here is the green, here is the blue, here is um, a special red called alizarin crimson, and here is another red that is a bit earthier. It's called transparent oxide red, and here is some yellow orange. So what I've done here is that in this pile here, I mix some purple, some blue, some transparent oxide red and some yellow. And I ended up, you see, with this kind of browny color. And I thought that this was not dark enough. So what did I do? I added, I took some green, that's called brush mix, uh, excuse me, I took some blue, that's called brush mixing. And I added some of my blue to get this dark color. And I'm going to show you in here, I'm going to paint this dark color. And you see, it's very, very, very pasty because some colors are very, very thick. So I'm showing you, this is kind of a very dark color. So here it is. This is how the Impressionist would do their dark or their shadows. Now, I'm going to put next to it, so I'm, I'm cleaning my brush in here. Okay, I clean my brush, I wipe my brush, and now I'm just going to put next to this dark shadow, I'm going to put just pure ivory black, which is the color that Manet would use. Obviously, Manet would not use pure black. He would very often put in, put in his black some other colors, but always his shadows were based with black. I'm going to wipe, I'm going to clean my brush again 
And I want to show you also how we can do, whoops, more cleaning. You know, sometimes these colors, they have so highly pigmented, they take some time to clean them. Yes, here we are. Um, I've also done another shadows because as I said in the previous videos, the impression is they want their shadows to be colored. So this shadow here goes kind of towards the red, the, the blue red. Now I've done another shadow and this one I've made it with green, with black and alizarin crimson, this red here. And here is what I get. Look at how dark this shadow is. So it's funny because this one is less pasty. It's probably because one of the colors I used, Viridian Green, is more like a liquid color. So from where you are, I think that you barely see any difference between these three colors. Now, I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna add some white in all of these colors and, you can, and you'll be able to see how different they are. So here's some white here. Here's my white, and I'm going to add some white in my first shadow. Look at that. It's very brown. Here it is. Now I'm white. cleaning my brush again, and I'm going to add some white now in my, my second shadow here. This one even if it was made with a lot of green, is really turning blue. And now I'm going to add some white into my black. And here it is. And here I'm just going to have a pure gray, simple and pure gray. And you can see now how the three colors are very different. And here you can see here that the shadows are colored, like the impressionist shadows. And this is something that me, I'm using a lot in my paintings. Um, this is very useful depending of, on what you want to do. But sometimes, for example, in this painting here, this painting here is made without black. All the shadows are made in these two situations where I've been mixing dark colors together. While this painting here, I've used black everywhere. All my shadows here are made with black. So it's just two different approach in how you're creating your shadows by using black or not using black like the impressionist or the classical painters. Now, here's the next things that I want to uh, tell you about. So you remember I said to you that I also wanted to show you how the classical painters, they wanted to have their painting to have no brush strokes. And for that, you use a technique that is called the glazing technique. And I'm gonna show you that. So I prepared a little canvas in here. And um, what I've done is that uh, I started by having a background that is here that is pretty dark because at that time they were always starting on a dark background. And what I've done is that I added some very thin layer of painting and I kind of spread them like for a long time. Okay, and in this, in the painting, what I've done is that I've added a special liquid that is called a uh, liquid original. This is what we use nowadays. You know, back in the old days, they were certainly using something else. But nowadays, this is what we use. And thanks to that, you can yeah, work your painting until it's very, very, very smooth and you don't see your brushes anymore and you have no brush strokes. You have to imagine that in the classical paintings, they would have sometimes 10 layers of this glazing technique. So I'm gonna show you quickly about that, how I did it. So what I've done is that, so I'm using a little bit of um, liquid that I'm putting here, just, just a little bit. Up. 
here it is. Just, it helps liquefy my painting. And then, so let's say that I'm going to add a little bit of white in here. So you see how my, my, my white paint is very pasty. So I'm going to mix it here with the liquid glaze and then I'm going to add more white. And this, this takes quite a long time to really make it look without any brush strokes. It's, a, it's kind of a long process. And then what you do is that to avoid having any brush stroke, you use what we call a mop and you do that. And you have to repeat the same process like 10 times until you get exactly what you want. Now I'm going to show you that I've done that also on one of my paintings. And this is, I'm going to put that, these two paintings here. You see, in these two paintings, so first, as I said, I use black like the classical painters, but I've also used the glazing technique because all of that here, all the sky here, this, the way you go from blue to this kind of um, pinky color and then orangey color, I used that glazing technique. I went back on this sky at least six or seven times until I was happy with what I had. And same thing here. While, in fact, in this situation here, you know, here, for example, the house here, kind of a glazing technique here too. But in the flower here, definitely you can see the brush strokes. So this is the slap dash technique. This is not the glazing technique. And in here, I worked with a thick paint. So I hope you enjoyed the, the, this little demonstration and uh, you know that like that next time you'll go to the museum and you'll look at these paintings, you want to understand a little bit better how uh, they made them and what technique they used. Nice chatting with you, abonne-toi which means subscribe to my channel. Have fun and see you at the next video.